Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chat Channel. My name is Tim Hayden, and I'll be your host. We have a super, super show for you today. Our guest is the beautiful Esther Terblanche. Esther is a South African actress and producer best known for her roles on television soap operas in both South Africa and the United States. She is best known for her role of Princess Jillian Andrasi in, in the American All My Children. Welcome to the show, Esther. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here with you. I really appreciate you having me. Oh, well, I appreciate you agreeing to be here. Thank you. So how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It's a beautiful Monday. It's a uh, beautiful day out here in California, Los Angeles. Um, how are things been going for you? Things have been going great. I just recently got back from a beautiful, wonderful trip to South Africa. I haven't seen my family in almost three years since the pandemic. And I had just a marvelous trip seeing them. So it was just so wonderful to visit them and spend time with them. So I've been back now maybe three weeks and yeah, it was just wonderful to see them. Did, did you have any trouble with the travel, you know, with all the rules and stuff that they do? No, it was all easy. Good. Effortlessly wonderful. Yes. That's Everything great. Was, was really great. Um, well, I guess I'll start at the very beginning. What was it like for you growing up in Rustenburg, Northwest Providence, South Africa? <laughs> you know, it was really wonderful. It was a small little town. Um, at that point in time, it wasn't even listed on the map. It was really a small little place, and I grew up half of the time on a farm, on a game farm, and I was just this little girl growing up um, surrounded by a lot of animals. My dad had a game farm, and um, I had the privilege of growing up with a lot of wild animals like warthogs and monkeys and ostriches. And um, it was just such a blessing for me. And uh, I, it was kind of in the middle of nowhere on the border of Botswana. And I just was there in the uh, kind of in the wild. And I started having these big dreams of going to Hollywood and being an actress. And it seemed so far removed from where I was at the time that it almost seemed completely impossible. But I guess the more I, I lived with the animals and the more it became real to me. So, yeah, that's 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 how that dream, I think, started. Well, you started out on some uh, South African shows, but I think your first thing was uh, Miss Teen South Africa. You won in 1991. Yes. That yes. was, that had to be pretty neat to do that, to win. Yes, yes. But I also started even before that, I started hosting um, in South Africa, we, we call it presenting um, some TV programs, some shows, um, like a kids TV program called KTV, which is kids TV. So I started to, to do that. Um, and then a math program called Math No Problem which is so ironic because I really was bad at math. And <laughs> here I was hosting the show, like teaching kids how to do math. And yes, I think I was really good at that because I was so bad at math. So I could really teach them how to do it because I sucked at it. And uh, I, I, maybe that made me good. I don't know. 
I like to think so. <laughs> Matt's not my strong suit either, so don't feel bad. <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> mine either. Um, so yeah, so I I, I did start um, in television probably when I was about fifteen. Do you remember your first acting job? How your first day? Yes, that was on KTV. Um, I actually remember the audition. I got there and there were so many kids in the line and my parents took me and I remember they, when they dropped me off, they were like, no way. Like you expect us to wait here, like to, this is going to take all day. And they were just about to say like, no, forget it. Like get in the car, we're going back. Because it was, I came from a different city, from Pretoria. They drove to Johannesburg. And I felt it like they were going to say, get in the car, we're leaving. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to be really, really quick. Like, don't worry, I'm, I'm really going to be quick. And I went straight up to the front of the line. And I just said, my parents are going to leave. Please, can I, go, can I go now? First in line, please, please. My parents are going to leave. And unbelievable the guy said yes and i went like i was one i was one of the first people to go in if not the first and two minutes later i'm out and i ran up to the car and i said okay i'm done let's go we can go like you don't have to we don't have to go we i'm done we can go two days later i got a call like you got the job <laughs> so, yeah. can you imagine how angry those <laughs> girls in line were <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I just like my parents, my parents like, don't want to wait for me. I need to do this audition. Please. They, they, they literally said, no, they're not waiting. Please. We, I came really far, like two hours. They, they said, they're not waiting all day. Please, please. Can you see me? You, you should have used that on all of your uh, auditions. <laughs> But I've never been to an audition with so many kids. Like it was going like around, like so many. Wow. Yeah. So I I guess after that, you started planning to move to America, correct? Um, I guess the, the America thing started when I was young still. I don't know why. I just always had this thing I... I I'd like to go to America. And then when I booked um, Igoli in South Africa, um, I it, it became more real to me. And then I, um, well, I came to America to just see what it's like and to, to visit. And then I came to see an attorney to see what would be my steps. And he said, okay, yes, you would qualify on special abilities in, in the acting field. And it's going to cost at that, at that time, many years ago, maybe like $5,000. And he said, but you know, you can always enter the green card lottery. And I said, and what would be my chances? And he said, well, you know, like one in a million, but there's, you, you'd have one in a million chance. I said, okay, well, one in a million, there's that chance. I'll, I'll enter it. So I entered the lottery and I won it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, oh, my why? That's <laughs> Wow. You have been okay. I, I wait. Well, I could be that one in a million. So I you have the best luck. You should have played the <laughs> lottery after that. The real lottery. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I have good luck there. I had really good luck. So I thought, you know, well, one in a million, there's that one chance that one in a million. So I saved myself some money there with the attorney. So for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. You should look into doing commercials for the lottery. Hey, I won a different lottery, but I won. <laughs> yes, right? Yeah. You never know. Never know. <laughs> so how terrified were you to move to America? I mean. Oh, my goodness. I was 
I started crying two weeks in advance of my move. I cried all the way on the plane. I was flying Alitalia and the whole way I was thinking, are you crazy? What are you doing? This was the, this is the biggest mistake. What did you do? And I arrived at LAX and I walked out with my two suitcases, one in each hand, and I walked And you did out. all of this on your own, correct? You didn't have yes. anybody with you. Yes, I was all by myself. I walked out and I stood there and I just looked out and I just remember seeing this big city. And I thought, okay, I'm just literally going to put my suitcases down. I'm going to turn around and walk straight back into the airport and I'm getting on the first plane back. I'm going back. Like, I'm, I'm crazy. What did I think? Like, I didn't think. Um, I've lost my mind. And um, I stood there probably for 10 minutes contemplating this, like talking to myself. And I thought, okay, maybe just, 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 just give it a week. You know, just, 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 just give it a week. Anyway, I talked myself into getting into a cab and I talked myself into staying a week longer and here I am. Right well, today. Did you have a plan for when you arrived or were you just your plan was just to get here and figure it out? Uh no, I I had a sort of a plan. I already had a manager that I set up on my previous visit. And I I did have a place to stay, I think, yes. Um, but it just, the reality of it all just hit me so much i mean even growing up i didn't even want to go s have sleepovers i just wanted to be i just wanted to stay home i wanted to be with my parents i wanted to stay home i didn't like leaving the house i'm i'm very uh i don't like to leave my comfort zone so That's to me, me that's me. That's you? <laughs> That's me. Yeah, I don't I don't like to to venture off, venture out. Like I just want to stay where I'm familiar with things. Yes. You know. I think that's part of it because I don't live in a very big town. I think it's maybe 120,000 people now. So oh, it's not really yeah. big. So maybe that has something to do with you came from a small little town I did, and I live in one. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say, your experience in the airport, I would have freaked out. I've never been to a big airport like that. Oh, wow. You haven't? Mm -mm. So yeah. I can feel your anxiety on that. Yeah. Definitely. Yes, it was real anxiety for me. Yeah. And then uh, I know you speak like four or five different languages. Um, yeah. Did you have any issues with the American, the way they talked, not necessarily I, the English, but the hyperboles and idioms? Yes, I did. I did. And, you know, even with the pronunciations, I had problems. Like, I remember when I just moved here, I would sit in a restaurant and I would say, can I have a glass of water? And they'd be like, what? And so finally I realized, I just got to say, can I have a glass of water? And then they all understood you. But if I, if I said, can I have a glass of water? Nobody knew what I was saying. So I just had to start throwing it like glass of water. <laughs> you throw that accent so well. Yeah. <laughs> so they just didn't understand you. So, um, sorry, that's my Alexa speaking. Um, uh, and yes, the, the idioms and all of that. And even when I started working on all my children, I constantly spoke wrong. 
I said the wrong things. I think I offended people. Did you do that on part? I mean, they developed that into your character as far as, you know, the, the, the shoes on the wrong foot, you would say, it, it's, you know, things like that. Yes. Did they do that on purpose or? So what happened was when we did our rehearsals, the, the, the writers could see us um, on the monitors and they would see me make these mistakes all the time. And I guess they f thought it was funny, me saying the things wrong all the time. And people were laughing at me. I mean, I didn't think it was funny, but they thought it was funny. And then next thing I knew, they started to write it into the scripts. So yes, that all happened because of it really happened. That's how that happened. That's crazy too. I mean, <laughs> to know that you couldn't, didn't really understand. And it's not just you. If you don't come from America, you really don't get some of the idioms that we use. No, I still don't. I still say all the wrong things. I, yes, I, I mean, I still say the wrong stuff all the uh, time. I know doing my research, there is on YouTube, there's two parts where they took your character and that's all it is, is when you misspoke things. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I'll have to send you the links, yeah. Oh, I would I love mean, to see that. It's like, yeah, it's like each one's like three minutes long. Oh. But it shows you saying the wrong thing and then it's usually Ryan who corrects you because that's who you're usually in the scene with. But yeah, I'd send it to you. And Dion King says, I can't wait. I love Princess Jillian, Eugenia, Marie, and Drossy Lavery. Oh. She knew all the names that I didn't even know all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. Do you, do you remember your audition for all my children? Yes, I do. Yeah. Did you screen test with anybody or? Yes, I screen tested with um, Danny Cosgrove. Oh wow! Yeah. Yes, that uh, was a that was a uh, that was um, that was great. Um, it was interesting, actually. I did the I started off the screen test, and at first I thought. And, you know, I just moved to America. I just got used to living in Los Angeles. I just found my feet. I just feel comfortable. I, I'm, I'm just kind of happy now in Los Angeles. And now they want me to move to New York. I'm not sure about that. Like, look at this city. It's a concrete jungle. I don't know if I can live here, start all over again. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should just mess up this audition. And so sure I did. Like it started <laughs> off, I messed it up. And then I said, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I start over again? And then I said to myself, you know what? Just do your best. And if you get it, then, then you'll, you'll do it. You'll just move here. You'll just, it'll be a great experience. You'll, so you'll live here. So, so you'll just, do it again. You'll just do it again. And then I just went for it. And I just totally went for it. And I nailed it, I think. And um, uh, they told me afterwards, the, the thing that really made me get it was I, it wasn't in the in in the script but I did this thing with his tie, with Danny's tie. I walked past his desk and, and I took his tie and it wasn't written in. And I loosened his tie and I did this whole thing with his tie. Um, anyway, yes, and then it went great. And I, I did like a one take and that was it. And it went great and, and I got it. They really tried to traumatize you. You went from a huge city that's all spread out to another oh huge city that's all spread up. Yeah, 
Yes. Yes. Wow. That, that was quite something for me. You know, Do you remember what you're first? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Coming, coming from a farm, animals, and my feet on the, you know, on on the, in the sand and stuff. So yes. it was something else for me. And, and the noise. I mean, the noise. Okay. I can't even imagine. And I lived right across um, Roosevelt Hospital. So it was always there the ambulances and the noise, but you know, you get used to it. Like anything, you get used to things. Yeah, you do, I guess. It's just, that would be just so intimidating uh, doing that. Do you remember what your first day was like on All My Children? Oh, yes. I was so excited. Um, they put me up right in the beginning in the Radisson Hotel right there in Columbus circles. And um, I was so, so excited the night before I could not sleep. And I overslept the next morning. <laughs> and I, um, I never do that. I am very good on time and stuff. And I woke up and I had to be on set like 7.30 and I woke up at like 7.20. I woke up, I jumped out of bed, I have never got dressed so fast, I literally ran to the studio, there was no time even for a cab, I just ran, 7.30 I walked in there, I ran six wow. blocks, <laughs> that was the fastest I've ever gotten to work and I made it on time, so I will never forget that day. If you're like me, when you do something like that, it just ruins your day. It just makes it so much harder. <laughs> yeah, yes. And um, that day I had to wear red shoes, red high heels. And I remember this scene was they, they had to, my, Jillian's car broke down and um, they had to pan up my legs. And they gave me the shoes. They said, you can keep the shoes. So I still Ooh. have the shoes. Yeah, that was my first day. That's very cool. Do very you remember, exciting uh, day. <laughs> do you remember what it was like meeting some of the, the cast members there? Oh, yes. Um, you know, I made a decision beforehand um, that I've never seen the show before I started there because it didn't show in South Africa and I, I've never really watched the show. And I decided I'm not going to watch it because I didn't want to be intimidated right. by all these big time actors like Michael Nader and Susan Lucci. And, you know, of course I knew of them, but I thought if I'm going to start watching the show, I'm going to be so maybe intimidated by them. So I just decided I'm just not going to watch it. I'm just going to not watch it um, and I'll just walk in there. I'll be more confident and I'll just uh, have great respect for all of them and their work. And I know all about the show. I know it's an amazing show. It's been on for many years and, um, and that's, that's what I did. Well, also, your character luckily didn't have to know any of the background because it was a new character coming to town. Yes. Yes. So, you know, you didn't have to know whose who's father was who at that point. Yes. Do you remember what it was like meeting Cameron for the first time? Yes. Yes. <laughs> was it instant chemistry? No. No? No. Because y'all had good chemistry on camera. Y'all had really good chemistry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, he was, he was cute and he was adorable, but, um, it, it, it was something that developed, I think, um, just working with him and getting to know him and, um, yeah. You have the benefit of working with some very big 
uh, names like Michael Nader, John Callahan, David yes. Canary. Yes. I mean, yes. Gosh, gosh, that had to be what, so much fun. I, it was amazing. Oh my god, I'm getting getting goosebumps. They, these these were some phenomenal some phenomenal actors and you know they were all so nice some really kind people yeah really? I, uh from just doing my show and meeting celebrities all that i've had on have been super nice super nice really yeah so were you prepared for the demise of jillian Um, that was shocking. That was, um, sad. Uh, it was the hard scenes for me and Cameron to shoot. Uh, I cried. I had to like. Well, you were trapped on the floor too, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Weren't you trapped on the floor underneath? Yes. Those? And I was. <laughs> They were like, stop crying. And um, <laughs> you, you're dead. Don't cry. And Cameron was really crying. And it was it was sad scenes for us to shoot, which worked in, in his favor. But it was difficult scenes to shoot. Really difficult scenes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's always hard to... Um, to go after you've been part of something for so long. Yeah. And, and I remember I watching when that happened. I, I do remember that. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Do you think, uh, this is purely hypothetical, do you think Ryan and Jillian would still be together had she lived? Definitely, yes. I think so, too. Y'all are soulmates. I do, too. The characters I, were. I, I, I just don't think that they could... Um, Mm, there would be a better match. I, I don't think either. I didn't like you, uh, Jillian and Jake together. I just didn't like that connection. I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, well, while you were on the show, you got to do another show called Spin City, which yes. ironically, you got to play Jillian. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So, did you get to go on the set of Spin City and meet any of them, or did you just have to do it all from all my yes, children? Yes, I did. I did. I, I went on set. I met Michael J. Fox. Um, Very Bostic. You had some great people on that show, too. He, you what? I said there were some great people on that show, too. Oh, yes. Jennifer Esposito. Yes, I met them all. Yeah. They were... Um, shooting by Ch Chelsea Pier, is that yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. Carolyn Lynch says, they killed her off in such an unfair way. The good thing about the soaps is that you're supposed to be able to come back from the dead, but they made that virtually impossible for Jillian. Well, you never know. Never uh, know. That's true, I mean. I've seen some crazy stuff on soaps happen. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you never know. So do you think you would return to daytime if the opportunity came up? Yes, why not? Absolutely. Uh, I just know that daytime has such a much faster pace and so much more learning quicker. Oh, yes. It's, it's unbelievable. Like sometimes I had... 50 pages of dialogue to learn for the next day like it's just i don't even know how i did that to to remember all those lines was was kind of frightening yeah so being an actress yourself and having to do auditions since the pandemic it most auditions have gone all to video are you a fan of that or would you rather be an in-person audition I think I like in person. Most yeah. people do because they yeah. can feel it. Yeah. Give off emotion. I, I think it would lose something in, in tape. I think it would lose something in transition. 
Yes, I I I like in person more. I think. I've got a couple of pictures here. Let me find them here. I wanted to share. There's one of you and Jake at your wedding. That's nice. <laughs> you remember that? Doing that yeah, scene? Michael Lowry. He's such a sweet guy. He yeah. is. And then I've got one other one. I had oh, to have that yeah. in there. Cameron. He's the so what, You worked really close with Michael Nader. How was that? Oh, he's a great guy. He was great. Yes, he was. I liked him. He was everything I loved him in. Yeah. One of my favorites, for sure. So, yeah. what have he you been up to? He like, could be family, really. Like well, I mean, you were family, kind of, on the show. He kind of, him and Edmund took you in. Yes, but it, it felt like we could be family. Funnily that's, enough. That's that's great to be able to work with somebody and have that connection. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you been up to lately? Have you been trying or uh, doing any I, hobbies or I actually like um um am part of a uh got involved with um a cancer foundation um that we started in South Africa with um Rudy Repstein, and it uh, involves some celebrity uh, musicians and uh, artists and actors, and um, we're planning to bring it to America, and it is interesting because my dad just got diagnosed with cancer too and so i'm sorry it's something really close to my heart and my mom also passed away from cancer so it's it's something i'm really you know interested in finding a cure for and uh, you know i feel very passionate about so um yeah, so I'm I'm involved with that, and um, if you'd like to give me the link, I can add it to this later the description, and then if anybody watching this can will be able to visit it. And oh, thank you. Yes, I didn't know about it ahead of time, or I would have had it on there already. Oh, okay. Thank you. I can I can send it to you later. Yes, I can always add it to the description, and everybody that's watching it later on even can go to it and visit. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Yes. It sounds like a great foundation. Yes, it is. It is really wonderful. You know, I think eh, so many people can, uh, you know, w wants to find uh, or know people who has cancer or wants to help find a cure for that. So a lot of people are in that boat. Right. Yes. Uh, I've noticed uh, here in the recent years that South Africa is getting a little bit more, you know, some of their people are coming over here and being celebrities like you and that they've been doing some filming in South Africa more often too. Yes. Yeah. Which is great for the economy over there. It is. And it is such a beautiful country and the weather is great and different beautiful locations. So it offers so many different opportunities. So it's it's such a such a great thing. Well, I'm gonna probably embarrass myself here. I would like to visit Africa one day, but I would like to visit uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. I don't know if you were anywhere near that or not. But... Oh, you do. Yes. I would love to. I've never been there. I didn't know if it was close to where you are because I don't know geography in Africa. <laughs> wow, I have a little fascination with that. I do too. Kilimanjaro. Yes. And I think it, honestly, I'm not going to lie, I think it peaked from the song Africa. Kilimanjaro. That one. Uh, yeah, uh, no, the one by... Uh, Duran Duran, no. 
uh, I'll have to get, I'll find the link to get it to you. I can't think of what the song is now. Yeah, I have also a thing with a song about Kilimanjaro. I wonder if we're thinking about the same song. Uh, Kilimanjaro. No, the one that I'm talking about just mentions it one time. Plus the rain's down in Africa. <gasps> the rain down in Africa. That's it. I love that song. <sighs> they talk about wild dogs cry out in the night. Down in Africa. But where does it talk about Kilimanjaro? I forgot now. Um, Toto about Africa. Uh, they sing about sea. Oh, uh, gosh. I, I, I've been hearing that song a lot on my in, in my car. Um, it's a rain down in Africa. I can't sing so. Never mind. I can't sing. Yes, more. I can't sing. Yes, there we go. I love it. <laughs> it's a good karaoke song. It's probably one of the most karaoke songs sang. Wow. Uh. That is awesome. Yeah. It's a good, I love that. It's total, that's a great song. It's a great song. I love that song. So what was the best part for you living in Africa? Besides family, of course. Just uh, something in the sky, the way it feels, the people. Just the, the heartbeat of it like that. Well, here's the line I was talking about. It sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti. Nice. You have to hear it after listen to the song. You'll, you'll, you'll remember once you hear it. Come on. Uh, so is there anybody, and I ask everybody this, is there anybody that you really, really want to work with? Would not. Or would want to. That you really want to. No, I wouldn't ask you not. No, I wouldn't do that to somebody. Would I that I want to? Oh, yes. A lot of people. A lot of people. Okay. Yeah. So, um, do you think you would prefer going to films over daytime? Sure. That's because it's totally different. It's a different pace. Uh, you know, it, you've got so much to do and longer time to do it in the movie than you do on daytime. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the, the thing with film is then you have to travel, go on location. The thing mm -hmm. that I don't like to do so much. Right. <laughs> the comfort zone. The comfort zone. So if somebody can travel with me, you know, that'd be nice. That would make it a lot easier. Make it a lot easier. You might have to look into getting you a, uh, a pet. One of those service, service animals to help for anxiety that yeah. could go with you as long as it wasn't out of the country. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies or anything? Yes. I have my I have uh, lots of animals. I have like five squirrels. Really? Yeah. They're wild squirrels, but they but right. they but they're, but they're tame squirrels. They they just come to me and they come into the house and I hand feed them. And um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they, they're all named Dita. 
Um, <laughs> yes, they're awesome. Uh, I've got some here out in the trees. Toward when I first started seeing one, I kept calling him Sammy, and then more kept coming. I couldn't tell apart, so they're all Sammy now. Oh, really? <laughs> so you you've got Sammys? I've got these. <laughs> yep, Sammy the squirrels. Well, Sammy oh, can either be boy or girl. Sammy Joe or, you know, Samuel. That is too funny. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is but I can't either. get them to come up to me. They what? They won't come up to me like yours do. Oh, mine, yeah, mine eats from my hand now. And if I don't, in the mornings, they will they will come inside and they will scream like, <laughs> like they want their want their peanuts. I have to buy the peanuts by the 70, 75 pound bags. Yep. It's amazing. Uh, if I don't feed mine in the morning, they'll get up here on the deck and look in the window and freak my dogs out till they start barking. <laughs> wow. But if the dogs don't chase them anymore, I have got them trained not to chase the squirrels. Oh, really? Finally. Oh. Yeah, I'm with you. I love animals. Do you? I love animals, too. Growing up, uh, my dad was part of the um, uh, conservation. And like if hunters went out and they shot a squirrel and they saw a nest, they would call him into the group. They would go out and get the babies and bring them. And we'd raise them and then release them. Oh, my goodness. I want a baby or, squirrel so bad. Well, you have to be licensed now. You didn't have to back then. You have to have a license now to do it. But you could get them. It's not hard to be a rehabilitator. Wow. You just got to feed them like a baby in a little bee bottle or eyedropper at first. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but they're fun. But I'm sure that uh, once you let them go, they'll still come visit you. Oh, yeah, they stayed around in the yard and stuff, yeah, and come down on the porch and stuff to us. Because my squirrels hang out here all all, all day long. They just hang out here. Yeah, mine right, kind of roam the neighborhood. They got a root, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a big squirrel fan, though. Uh, Esther, I am so glad you were here with me today. Oh, thank you so much. I do so hope that much. you'll come back. Huh? I do hope you'll come back. Oh, please. I would love to come back. Just invite me and I'll be here. Well, if you want to hang out backstage for just a moment, I'll be back there in just a moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. I'd like to thank Esther Turbalanche for being here today and chatting with us. I'd like to thank the Necrotizing Fasciitis Foundation for sponsoring our show. For more information on necrotizing fasciitis, please visit www.neckfasci.org. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great upcoming episodes. And as usual, please remember to be kind to one another. Have a great day.